attend you. Place of realization that no matter what, no matter the situation, God is God. Amen. God is still God. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. Same God that yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. God is still God. Amen. No matter what you're passing through, no matter what you're facing, God is God. Hallelujah. Just turn with me to John 16, verse. <clears throat> John 16, verse 33. Jesus said this words under the disciples. Uh, if you actually begin to follow critically from John 14 down to 17, it was more or less one message that he was disciples, you know, to strengthen them, to encourage them, because he was about to depart. That was a long sermon from John 14 all through to 17. It's one sermon if you really want to understand the Bible. And so he was trying to encourage them, was trying to strengthen their faith, strengthen their mind, so that they don't get too discouraged about life because of the things that are going to be passing through. So, verse 33 says, These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. And then in the world you shall have tribulation. And it said, Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In the world, as long as you are in this world, you are going to have tribulation. Praise God. And he said, be of good cheer. So he was trying to encourage them because they are going to, there are things they are going to face. I mean, if you remember, when God was speaking to Joshua, he said, be courageous, be courageous, be thou courageous. Why? Because there are things that Joshua was going to encounter as he takes over the reign of power from Moses. What is, he was trying to encourage him. This one thing that God does, he first encourages you knowing that you are going to go through some stress and that which is called tribulation, as far as the word here is used here. The word is eclipses in the, in, the, in the Greek. And I tell you, I mean a pressure, oppressing together. It means oppression. It means affliction. It means to be straightened. That is, you, you know what it means? You compress something. It comes to a place of perhaps what you cannot be able to contain. Right? It means affliction. You're going to face affliction. So, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. So, I, I keep on saying this to you, that you are a Christian does not exclude you from pressures of this world. No, no, no. If you think it excludes you, okay, fine. Why do you still eat? And why do you still go to work? There are still pressures. Hallelujah. Yeah. You go to work, you try to make money, and what's the next thing? You want to get food? Is there a famine in the land? Yes, it's all there because we are human beings. But the Bible is saying, be of good cheer in the midst of all this thing. Be happy because you are going to be an overcomer because I am an overcomer. In other words, I overcome for you that you may be an overcomer. So when you see it, don't let that be anything that will bring you down, keep you low, you know, destroy your spirit, all of that. That's what he's saying. Like I said, it means affliction. It means a burden, it means persecution, it means tribulation. And it's so important you understand this fact. I'm still defining one word there, which is what? Tribulation. All of these things, I mean, rather one word, slipses in the Greek. Jesus said, this is what you're going to face. He prepared your heart before time. It's always so good for you to understand, sometimes, once in a while, that God speaks to you. If you are facing certain situation, because that word that will bring to your mind or to your ear, to your hearing, will be that thing that will give you strength and confidence to be able to overcome. Amen, somebody? Are you still following me? Right. He said, be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. And he's trying to make them understand again here that they have to be at peace. And that is another thing that is, I feel is a little bit terrible. I don't know. Look at what he said there. This thing have I spoken unto you that in me you may have what? Peace. You know what that means? To have peace in Christ. That word actually means tranquility. To be peaceful. A state of national tranquility within your mind. No matter what is going on, you are still stable in your spirit. No schizophrenic attitude. No confusion. I mean, your mind is not running 
left or right, you are still stable. He said, listen to me, folks. I am allowing you to have my peace. Now, this peace is the peace that manifests in the midst of troubles. This is the peace that can, can be seen when there are storms. How many of you remember when he was in the midst of the storm with the disciples? He mainly used one word, peace be still. But before he said that, remember, he was lying down and sleeping right in the boat. And the storm was there. The water was coming in. The boat was almost capsizing, but he was not disturbed. He said, my peace, that is his own kind of peace. Not the type that the world gives to you, but the one that he gives to you. His own kind of peace is in the midst of trouble, he's not shaken. He's not moved. Are you getting that? He said, my peace I give to you. I mean, there is something he has given to us that the world cannot take from us. And that is his own peace. Are you getting what I'm talking about? That you may have peace. I leave this with you. I'm saying this with you that you may have peace. My own kind of peace. That's what I'm leaving you with. Praise God. So, but as long as you're in the world, you're going to face tribulation. So, tribulation cannot distract us. Tribulation cannot get us out of the word of God. Tribulation cannot make us feel that God is no longer in existence. Tribulation cannot bring us to the begin to think, oh man, why am I a believer? No, no, no. There is a kind of peace that we inherit from the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the midst of all of those treasures in life, he is still there with us. Amen, somebody? The word peace, that means harmony, it means Accord, it means security, it means safety, it means prosperity, it means felicity. I'm defining peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Harmony, make and keep things safe and prosperous. All of these things coming from the word peace. By implication, in the midst of famine, you're going to prosper. In the midst of difficult situation around the world, you're still going to prosper. Why? He leaves something with you, which is called his own peace. Hallelujah. So, I'm going to take on the word affliction. And I want you to see this, that before you were born, this may be a little bit difficult, but before you were born, there is nothing now that you are passing through that was not ordained for you. I don't see anything accidental in everybody's life. I mean, if you cannot understand that, because I'll take you to the scripture, I'll make you see that. If you can understand that, there is nothing in creation for you of being called of God that is accidental. Everything for his son that Jesus went through as it was written of me. Am I correct, somebody? So there is nothing you're passing through that is not written of you and about you and for you to go through. Absolutely nothing. You got to understand that. You're just walking right through except you're out of the way of God. But if you have come to love him, if you come to believe him, as you're passing through, you're walking through everything that he has programmed for you. Not, not the accidental as far as the child of God is concerned. No, no, no. Praise God, somebody. Now let me show you something here. Exodus chapter 1 verse number 8. This story always tells me any time I look at it. Exodus chapter 1 verse number 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt. We knew not Joseph. Remember Joseph was there with his people after his death. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal with them wisely. Verse number 10. Let them multiply and it come to pass that when they are fallen out in the war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them out of the land. You know what? Let's keep them in bondage. We don't want them to join forces with our people and free themselves. Praise God. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them pressure. Tribulation, the same word, with burdens and the build from Pharaoh treasure cities, Pinton and Ramses. But the more, that's what I love, the more they afflicted them, the more they do what? They multiply and grew. Hallelujah. And we're grieved because of the children of Israel. Your enemy are going to be grieving. <laughs> the more they afflicted them, the more they multiply and grew. They were saying, look, we want to keep them in a straight jacket so that they don't multiply. Let's deal with them so that they don't, they don't grow. But the more they try to do that, the more they multiply. Why? Because they are a covenant people. Hallelujah. You can't oppress and suppress a covenant person. That is something I want you to understand. 
The covenant of God was in their life through Abraham. You can oppress and suppress a covenant person. No, no, no. The covenant works in the midst of that which you think you are doing to oppress people. The covenant is still working. Nobody is going to be able to subdue you. I want to say that to you emphatically. As long as your faith is in God, as long as your mind is on the Father, there is no power that will suppress you. It's not out there. It's not made available yet. It's not created yet. The more they try to afflict them, the more they grew. And they do what? They multiply. There is something you can do about it. Praise the living God. This why you see, those who claim to be enemy in the midst of what they think they are doing, you're succeeding. You're growing. You're multiplying. You're prospering. It's always an amazement to them. Why is this man still going the way he's going with all that I'm trying to do? Covenant is working. Are you there with me? Praise the living God. The more they try to afflict them, the more they grow and they do what? They multiply. I need you to get this. Why? Because there is a covenant. Let me show you where this thing comes from. God told them this. As a matter of fact, he told Abraham about the Genesis 15. You look at the whole story. Men read all of Hebrew. Let's think verse 13. Genesis 15, verse 13. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that a seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward, shall they come out with what great substance? Hallelujah. This is the word given to Abraham with the Wenai experience in, in Egypt. The nation that we're going to put them in bondage is going to afflict them. He said, but listen, I'm going to judge that nation. And that is something that's so much of a guarantee for you that no matter who is trying to oppress you, they should be ready for God's judgment. Unknown to them. Listen. When the scripture says. Touch no man anointed. I do my prophet no harm. It was real for the company of the children of Israel. It is real for as many as God. Have truly called unto himself. The whole nation of Israel. Were like a prophetic community. And God was saying. Touch no man anointed. I do my prophet no harm. It was like a prophetic community and then he come to Abraham and then he come to Isaac and then he come to Jacob in the case of Abraham that was when you discover that Abimelech took Sarah and God rebuked Abimelech touch no man not yet are you getting that and then when Isaac remember time for famine very good and driving them away touch no man not yet again and then you talk about Jacob. Laban was trying to cheat Jacob out of his substances and his word. And what happened? Touch him I noted. In fact, he told him, when you see Jacob, say nothing. Either to the left or the right. Say nothing to him. Keep mute even with cut up with Jacob. Are you following what I'm talking about? That's what it means to touch him I noted. You don't understand how God protects you. You don't understand how God is speaking to the enemies behind the scene. Unknown to you, you may not even know it. Because all of these things that God was speaking to these people, they were not even aware. I'm saying Abraham never knew. I'm saying Isaac never knew anything. I'm saying even Jacob had no clue what God told Abimelech. You don't even know the war God is fighting on your behalf. I need you to keep your head up. Don't look down. Don't think you are failing. Don't think it's done with you. Don't think life is miserable. I mean, no, no, no. God is still at work on your behalf unknown to you. Can I hear an amen? Praise God. He said they shall come out with great substance. And I like that. In the midst of this your trouble, you're coming out with something good. <laughs> Praise God. You're coming out with something heavy. You're coming out good, prosperous, strong, and higher than you were before. You're coming out in the midst of this. Think about it. You know what? When the Bible says when the children of Israel were living in Egypt, and that they went, the King James never said something that was really right. The Bible said they went and borrowed gold and silver from the Egyptians. How many of you remember that? That word borrow is very, very wrong. They never borrowed. 
what happened is they paid back the years of labor that the Egyptians were not paying them. They were working, building up the ramps, so and they weren't paying them nothing. So it is time for reparation. Everything that they owe them, they collected from them. I am saying there is nothing that the enemy has taken from you that will not recover. Hallelujah. So that's exactly what happened. For the years that they labored, the 400 years, and the Bible says, the Israelites spoiled the Egyptians. How many of you remember that? That means everything they owe them. I am saying, if anybody is owing you anything, it's going to pay back. <laughs> Praise God. The way that collected everything from them. So they didn't borrow. How can they borrow for what they labor for? They were working and they were not paying them. And they were living now and said, I need my salary. It was their salary. It was what was due them. That's what they collected from them. And by the time they finished collecting what was due them, Egypt was empty. Because the Bible said they spoiled them. Listen, if enemy has kept any of your property, they are going to turn it back to you. That is why I discovered that. You see, you don't need to be bothered about, wait, I haven't got a child yet. I haven't got this yet. I haven't got that yet. The number of years that you may not have gotten this thing, they are going to be coupled. They are going to be coupled back for you. I mean what I am saying. Because you see, the enemy does not, in true sense, destroy what belongs to you. He only keeps them unknown to him. That's why you find the story in the case of David in Ziklag. Remember that? David went to war. I have it there. I'm going to share that with you. Maybe today or some other time. They went to war. They came back. And the wife, the two wives and children, everybody have been taken into captivity. Are you done with me? And people were crying. And David himself at the stage was crying. But he came to a point now. That's part of what I'm going to make you see. Sometimes when you want people to sympathize with you, you're wasting your time. David got to the point and said, no, no, no. And the Bible says he encouraged himself. And he went to the priest and said, can I go and recover them? Say, go, you recover all. That means everything that was lost, they were only kept in place. They were not destroyed. The wife, everybody was intact. He went back and got everything back. You are going to recover everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this is what he told them. In the midst of that affliction, you are coming back with great substance. You are coming back with wet. You are coming back heavy. Praise God. That means the enemy is just keeping everything that they are taking from you. It, they are all preserved. How many of you understand? There's a way you put something in the bank. You may not be having it, but you know the money is there. You have a lot that shows you have it there. Is that okay? Anytime you want to, you go collect it. It's all in store. The bank is only there to help you preserve your money. And anytime you need it, you're going to get it back. Even whatever thing the enemy has taken from you, it's only been preserved. It's only been kept. When you need it, it's going to come out. Hallelujah. Go with me to Genesis 41. Let me show you another case of Genesis 41 verse 51 to 52. Genesis 41. 51, 52. This is Joseph. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said he had made me for God all my toil and all my father's house. In other words, the oppression, the oppression I had in my father's house, I have forgotten them. That's to say there's a way God is going to raise you that the years you lost will mean nothing to you. Did you get that? <laughs> By the time he finished dealing with you, you wouldn't even remember. That you were poor. Poverty you won't remember anymore. You just, you're just wondering, is this me? Are you getting what I'm talking about? Joseph said, I can't even remember what they did to me. I can't think of the affliction. I can't think of being in bondage. I can't think of being in prison. I can't even remember anything like that. It's so beautiful. When you come to this expression of God's love in your life. You can't remember anything. Your past is just gone. This is where you even come to the place of forgetting your enemies because you begin to realize that even all that they tried to do, they couldn't keep you in a cage. Why? Because God is always with you. The Bible says everything that Joseph did, they prosper. Why? Because God was with him. And he told the brothers, listen, you taught it for evil, but God taught it for good. Amen, somebody. All right, look at the next thing there. Verse 52. And the name of the second 
He called what? Ephraim. For God had caused me to be what? Fruitful in the land of my affliction. God has caused me. Hallelujah. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? That's why in Egypt, the more they afflicted them, the more they do what they prosper. God has caused me, oh glory, to prosper, to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And so shall he be with you. Amen. So when Jesus said, listen, you are in the war. My peace have I lived with you. Be of good chance. Are you getting that? In other words, in the midst of this oppression going on in the world, you are going to be fruitful. That's God's ordination for your life. Hallelujah. So, when you look at the challenges of life, I mean, when you tune in and begin to understand that where God sent me here for a purpose, I'm relying on God, I'm trusting on God, there is nothing that you ever miss. Everything you miss for a season, come back to you in another season. Praise God, somebody. Are you listening to me? I want you to understand what God is saying to us this morning. So that your faith will rise. Your joy will come up. I mean, there's a place you come to in your life that you will not remember your past anymore. You will not think of the evils that befell you on your past time. You begin to see the joy of your life. He called the child the name Ephraim. Why? Because the Lord has called me to be fruitful. Where? In the land of my affliction. And so shall it be with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So you are going to be fruitful. You're going to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. And then you are going to multiply. You shall not be few. You shall not be few in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Are you there? Turn with me to Acts 17, verse 19. Acts 17, verse 19. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I say that. Did I say 19? Yeah, I'm trying to look for the third day. That should be Acts 17 now. I'm talking about. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Let me see Acts 16. Verse 19, if that's what I mean. I'm looking for Paul when he appeared in the storm. And uh, the boat was to be lost. What's that? That's not even what I'm looking for either. Okay, maybe I'll just try and pick it up from here. Praise the Lord. But I'm trying to give you the story of Paul. Uh, it was on the midst of the sea. Broken ship. Remember? I mean, if you can remember the story there. Hallelujah. And then... Remember, he was to go to Jerusalem. He was, I mean, as a matter of fact, he told the owner of the boat that they must not sail at that time. But the person refused and they went on sailing. And then they encountered a storm. Remember? In the high sea. Praise the living God. Are you sitting there? Let me give you the story before I give you the passage now. So now, they were sailing. And they came to the place, there was this storm. And what's the next thing that happened? The Bible says us that God appeared to him by an angel and made him to understand. And he told him, be of good cheer. Right? That none of this thing, and no, apart from the ship, nobody shall be lost on that particular day. That's why we say, none shall be lost. Are you still there with me? Praise the living God. Let me give that to you. But be of good cheer. All right? Let me see here. Go to verse 23. I'm sorry. Go to verse 23. Very quickly. I mean chapter 23, verse 19. Sorry. Act 23, 19. Ah, I said I missed that again. Coming? 27 rather. Okay? 27. Good. 27. All right. And the Bible says on the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the sheep. That is when the storm becomes so terrible. Right? Yeah, 27. That's okay. Hallelujah. And then they begin to pull out things and make sure they survive. 
the ship was storming, and so on and so forth. Go to the next verse. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was what? Was taken away, as it were. All hope was taken away. We lost hope that we we're going to survive. Hallelujah. You know, when you're in the storms of life, that is where you come to sometimes. Your top mind is, I mean, your desire, this time is, well, life is miserable. I shared that with you last time in case of Paul, where they were frustrated about life and thinking that there was no need to live anymore. You come to that place of thinking, what is it like? Is there any hope anymore? Should I even continue to live? Praise the living God. The Bible said, the sun never appeared, the moon never appeared. That means they were in total darkness. That is a period of darkness sometimes you experience in life once in a while. Verse 21. But after a long absence, and they were fasting and praying, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Says, you should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from trade, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Remember what Jesus told disciples in John 16? For there, be, there shall be what? No loss of any man's life among you, but of this ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. And I want you to get that. Very important. The God whose I am and whom I serve. In other words, God owns me and I'm his servant. Can you, can you see that? And this is what he told him. Fear not. Say, fear not, Paul, that I must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that are all with thee. All them that are sailing with thee. Everyone with thee in the boat will be given to you. This is so important for you to understand now. The point is this. God takes you and brings you to to connect to some people and they become your covering. Are you following me? He said, I have given them to you. That means Paul's life is what is preserving everybody in that ship. And it's important you understand who God has asked you or directed you to. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes it's not your prayers that are preserving you, but your relationship to someone that God has called. And you need to understand that. That is why you don't, you don't, you don't mess with relationship. If you understand who God has really sent you to, to walk alongside, you don't mess with it. You don't joke with it. You keep it intact. Praise the living God. Everybody that was in the ship, the Lord said, I've given them to you. That means through you, they're all going to be preserved. Hallelujah. Verse 25. We are first be of good cheer. But I believe God, that it shall be even as it has told me. Praise the living God. And you read down and begin to say, this is where most of our good stickers, there shall be no loss. It's taken from this, Acts 27. Is that okay? And he's saying, no man is going to die as far as I am here. That means his life has become a source of preservation to the rest of the people. Praise God. And just exactly the way he told me, that is the way it's going to be. That no one shall be lost. Nothing except the ship. Now, I want you to pick that point because it's very critical. Very, very critical. We lost a young man. Now, I'm not telling this story for anything, but just to understand how certain things work in the spirit realm. We lost a young man some years back in the ministry. He was one among the first people that bought a car when we started ministry. In fact, he was the first. Young boy. But then, he was working one of these offshores. When he came to join us, he had nothing. But after a while, things began to pick up. Then he came one day and told me, I feel like buying a car. I said, go ahead, if you want to. 
He really went, he got a car. I remember it was that car he used to take Maxwell to school. Now, the first television that I used when I came to town was bought by him. I remember I was gospel, I was with you at Aquaibon, yes. I went for a meeting at Aquaibon, and Maxwell called me and he said, We just got a miracle. I said, What kind of miracle? He said, This boy just went to the market and bought a television. And what happened is he came to my house with his brother, and I was not around, and found out I was using black and white television. Amen. I was using black and white television. Some of you started life using plasma TV. Huh? <laughs> you see, think God is not faithful to you. I use black and white television. And you know, in fact, the ones we used the other day, we used to put, uh, you know, we put look on the, the, the to break it color. <laughs> use look on the skin, just wrap it up, and then you get color TV. Is that okay? We did all that, and you, you growing up with plasma TV, and you think God is so good to you. You don't know what they are saying. We've seen bad times. Hallelujah. Are you getting that? So he came to the house with his brother and they saw me with his black, te- black television, black and white television. Uh, and the brother said, man, with all that your pastor teaches, you come to that. Because that guy was really very good. He would take the message and transcribe them in total and take them out. He'd be listening overnight, transcribe the whole messages, type them out and we're distributing them. So he said, with all that your pastor teaches, at least I've visited, I mean, I've listened to all of those messages, and then he's using black and white, and you're happy. And that's what changed the guy's mind. Instantly, he went to the market and buy, bought a black and white television and bought uh, a video player. You understand that? And then he did that. After a while, I had the revelation. One night, I find that he was tied down, okay, like this kind of protector or whatever. Handrail. It was tied but on the front of the house. And two guys were there to give him a tear whipping. And I, I was stepping up and I saw them. I said, what are you trying to do? He said, no, no, no. I said, no, you can't touch this man. I said, this boy is my son. I said, listen, do you see the television in my house? Yes. That color TV, he bought them. And then other, there were two military guys. Looked at him and said, did you hear what he said? And then he talked to me. Are you sure? I said, yes, he bought them for me. He said, okay, for your sake, we're going to let him go. And then they lose him. I woke up. I didn't like the revelation. After about a month, I called him, called a young man, and I told him, listen to what I, I mean, I'm going to tell you. I need you to be careful. This is what I saw, and it doesn't, for me, speak good. So I need you to be careful. And so what's the next thing that happened? Just about three months after the or so, he entered a relationship and the relationship failed. And because the relationship failed, he was almost getting mad. I told him to relax. Just relax. Within a month, he went and picked up another lady and came to me and said, this is the lady I want to marry. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not impressed with this so haste. Relax. And just because of that, he got offended. And he left church. I tried to talk with him. He wouldn't listen. People went to him, he wouldn't listen. I said, I have to let him go. So one day, I just got a call. He left the whole of this environment and went to Wari Main Town that way. Somebody got me a call and said, did you hear what happened to this young man? I said, no. Actually, his name is Kingsley. I said, no. He said, he's gone. I said, what happened? He said, well, they took him to, I think, Mandion of Fire or something like that. For prayers and so on and so forth but he just slept and he couldn't wake up that's how this man passed on he never understood that as long as we were still together there was a covering over his life that's why i just give you this story that's what paul is saying here god has given you to me are you are you following what i'm saying now that's the only covering you have it's not necessarily sometimes your prayers it's just the people that you relate to the people that God have led you to join up with. That is just all you need. As long as you can remain there, it becomes your covering. God does that. Not because the people are special, but he just said, this is what I want. Are you following what I'm saying? Paul said, the God whom I am and the God that I serve spoke to me this night. And none of you shall be lost. Are you following what I'm talking about? 
I need you to understand. Relationship in the spirit is so powerful. And you can understand the same thing happened between Abraham and Lot. But in a different dimension now. In this case now, Abraham, I mean, Lot became successful because he joined himself with who? With Abraham. Who had a covenant with God. The success of Lot is not because of anything. But because of his relationship with who? With Abraham. Who got a covenant? And he said, I'll bless what I bless you. I'll cause what I cause you. How will God say that to somebody? And yet you still think it doesn't matter. Are you sitting here with me, somebody? Praise the living God. So what am I trying to make you understand? In the midst of some of the things you are passing through in life, your relationship, your mindset is enough situation to dance the whole tension. To bring you to the place of absolute joy once again. Fruitfulness, even in life. Praise the living God. So now, go with me to Romans 8 verse 27. I mean 28. Romans 8 verse 28. I just show you that. Oh, hallelujah. And we know. Hallelujah. That all things, not some things. All things. And we know. And I want you to know it. All things work together for good. To them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose. All things work together for good. That means in the midst of so bad situation, God wants to show himself. Are you sitting there with me? You should realize God allowed all that Joseph went through. Am I right? Everything he went through. Right from the pit, to slavery, to being in Pharaoh's house, tempted, taken to prison, all of that. God knew about it. God understood what was going to pass through. God was sending him. Remember what he told his brother later. Say, God send me here to preserve lives. But when he was passing through those process, nobody thought about he was going there to preserve lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you sitting there with me? Amen. And we know. You say, why is this so? Because those bad situations is where God won't really want to prove himself. People will now understand that this thing can only be God. Are you there with me? And we know that all things work together for good. We have been called like only this purpose. I like it, the English, the easy English translation. God has good purposes for those people who love him. Can I hear an amen? We know that. God has, I want to repeat, good purposes for those who love him. We know that. We know that fact. We know that this is a reality. That God has a good purpose for those who do what? Who love him. We know that. You first of all have to know it. And your knowing it comes such an assurance of faith that begins to make you stand strong in the midst of tribulation. Don't forget what Jesus said. As long as you're in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Amen, somebody? But in the midst of that, that is where God is going to prove himself. And when God shows up, man, we know that this can only be God. Nobody else can do this. Praise the living God, somebody. And I expect somebody to get a miracle very soon. Somebody is getting a miracle very soon. Yes, somebody is getting a miracle very soon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yet, yeah, you will know that this is God. Nobody else, only God. Then the next thing he says here is it to read translation. He uses everything that happens to them to bring good result on their behalf. He does this for those people that he has chosen. And he has chosen his people to be what he wants them to be. Can I hear an amen, somebody? He does all of that. For the people that he has chosen. What am I trying to make you understand? In the midst of tribulation, you're going to come out victorious. In the midst of affliction, you are going to continue to grow. In that which people think and there's no more life, that is where you're going to spring forth. When men think that you're already gone, that is when you are going to spring forth. In the name of Jesus Christ, life is going to be speaking good for you. Every 
situation will speak good for you. He said, all things, not some things, work together. And we know, we know, we know that no matter what, we know that in the midst of this trouble, life is coming out. In the midst of this situation, life is coming out. We know. Hallelujah. Because we know. Then we know. And that is because we know. Because we know. That all things, hallelujah, no matter what, no matter how, no matter where it's coming from, no matter the season, no matter the time, no matter who is originating it, we know that all things are working together for our good. Glory to God. No man can stop you. No power can stop you. No situation can stop you. No situation can stop you in the name of Jesus. And we know Glory, glory. All things work together for good. So no matter what you're passing through now, something good is coming out of it. No matter the situation, something good is coming out of it. For we know all things, not some things, all things work together for good. To those who have been called of God. And God has called us. God has chosen us. God has speak to us. We belong to God. So all things are working together for our good. It's the time for you to begin to rejoice. Joy is coming your way. Joy is coming your way. All things are working for your good. Joy is coming your way. You are going to smile again. Your sorrow is disappearing. Your pain is going. You will forget your bad times. You will forget your bad seasons. In the name of Jesus. All things are working together. All things are working together. Not some things, all things. I say all things. For we know. I say we know. That all things are working together. Perfection is in Christ. He is bringing you to the place of prosperity. He is bringing you to the place of fruitfulness. The more they try to afflict them. The more they prosper. The more they try to oppress them, the more they grow. You shall grow in the midst of affliction. You shall grow in the midst of your disappointment. In the name of Jesus. For this is a new season. This is a new season. This is a new day. For we know. I say we know. All things are working. Everything is for our good. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. That God has said that to Paul. He's saying the same thing this morning. There shall be no loss. You shall recover all. You shall recover all. You are recovering all. You are recovering all. You are getting everything back. In the name of Jesus. The years you have lost. You are recovering your years. The money you have lost. You are recovering your finances. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to praise God. Let's begin to talk to the Father. Talk to God. Praise Sotara Bashata. Just thank Him. Just thank Him.